Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Krimo joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. Now, Minerals Council South Africa says it supports beneficiation, but only where the economics make sense. Yes, so you've got to have a business case. <coughs> there are rumblings that perhaps there will be a carrot that will uh, invite uh, activity like this, but what Minerals Council would not like is a stick. <laughs> and so we need to be encouraged to <coughs> really add as much as possible. Now, it's not easy. We've got this tradition of tending to process to a point of refining, but not really making much thereafter. But even that, you know, moving a product to a refined position is regarded as beneficiation. You're adding value to it. You're doing much more than just exporting dust and rock. But the thinking now is that they should think about trying to go a little bit further because that could be very important for the country from a wealth point of view, you know, getting extra revenue, strengthening that rand, but also from a jobs point of view. So, and if it's inclusive, I think there could be a prospect of something good for South Africa, but it's not something that you can just click your fingers and it'll work out. You can see that out in Mbombela, you know, the company MCC has discovered that, you know, you, you've got your raw materials on the one side, and then you've got what we call the equipment producers on the other, original equipment producers. In between, there is huge scope. <laughs> and now they've seized this next step in that scope for electrical vehicles with uh, manganese sulfate. And they are the only ones doing it outside of China. What they have discovered is that China dominates this middle sector completely. But, you know, in partnership and working with China, perhaps we could do a lot more here in that middle sector where the world uh, is going to be caught flat-footed, you know, if uh, this is not really supplied, particularly with the critical metals coming in. Now, Sariti Resources is moving into wind energy through Sariti Green, but this could be further advanced uh, by an entry into solar energy. You know, this is incredible. This is a, a company which is, is controlled by Black Shield, is fully controlled to 90%. It is a company that entered the coal market very, very strongly, you know, taking over assets from big corporates, also exporting coal, but supplying a lot of domestic coal. And then taking a next step saying, we want to not just be a coal company, we want to be an energy company. Now that is the route to take. I think all the participants in coal, and we see Exoro is doing the same thing. You need to say we're an energy company because there's so much scope as you transition into the new energy era to enter the wind energy, which Sariti has already done, you know, with these very high masts <laughs> coming up in Mpumalanga. And, and what they've discovered is that, you know, you've got to use artificial intelligence to find out where that wind is. Now, the, they were remarking that, you know, you'll have your crew living in a certain area. They mentioned Bethel, where there's no wind. But they'll travel 20 miles to the site where there's a lot of wind. Now, how do you discover that? They're finding that uh, you know science material is really helping, and it's doing so with, on the wind side to such an extent they're thinking of sun now, as well, and also they're looking into East Africa. So it's a it's a big move that's coming about. And lastly, Kumba Aino is pleased with the multi-party government's continued commitment to um, reforming of the iron ore logistics. Yes. Yeah, so you had this momentum that had built up, you know, to try and improve the logistics the iron ore logistics in this case, the port logistics, the rail logistics, the rail was found to be pretty bad. And there were derailments, there were all sorts of issues, and that momentum was building up. Now you have the multi-party government come through, and they continuing with that momentum. So there's been no interruption. In fact, you know, you probably get a more focused public-private partnership now. And Kumba Iron Ore hailed this. You know, they said this is uh, something that will help us. We'll, we'll, we, there's a capacity there in the Northern Cape to export more. Again, it's a situation of, <coughs> you know, let's export more, get more foreign exchange, strengthen the rand. But they can also look around because there could be other things that they could do there. You know, the people sort of said to them, "What are you doing about the?" Renewable energy, well, they've got that on the go coming through Anglo-American, the group in VUSA. 
But if you, if you look at what you're doing with your processing, couldn't you make that cleaner? If they do start using green hydrogen, you know, that's going to create a new level of wealth creation and adding value to make a green product before you get to the port, where, you know, if they do collaborate at port level and create this green steel, well, that'll be <laughs> the sort of value adding that will be quite momentous. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. A great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.